Um, y'all got Bibles? Or, that's cool. So Proverbs chapter three. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't got no Bibles at the Bible study. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to eat. <laughs> So for this part, I'm gonna be just y'all can volunteer to read. Okay. Hopefully, chapter three, verse we'll start one. We're gonna go through the whole chapter, huh? Oh. The whole chapter of the Bible, chapter three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna read the whole proverb? Um. <laughs> uh, Lisa, you want to start off reading? Sure. How about you read, um, just read verse 1 and 2, please. Um, Proverbs 3. Chapter 3. <clears throat> Go ahead. Just read. Okay. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. All right. Any comments on this? The first two verses. What version are we on? Oh, see, so yeah, I'm on a different version. Oh, what version was that? Um, oh, yeah. This is in in Bible study. We don't read King James, so this like this man. Is really <laughs> okay, well, tell me mine. Come on, see. My son forgot read? not my law. Oh, See, that's why we don't read King James. Yeah, that's right. But, but yeah, my time so we can, I can change it. So what do you want us to change it to? It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, let's do, yeah, you can do American Standard, just no King James. So whoever's reading at the time, just kind of listen to that person. But kind of, can you read those first two verses real quick? Mm -hmm. Do I have to change my version? No, go ahead. You're good. Okay. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. All right. Any any comments on that part? Y'all listening? Y'all heard? Her? No. Can we read it again? Hey, it bring peace. peace. Uh, I, it, I need peace. Peace? It bring peace. Is what she said. Okay. That's why all I got. So, I got so the it. first two verses it says, "My son, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity." Okay. Peace, peace and prosperity means gonna bring me many blessings and positive. What What brings you many blessings? And you live right by God. God. Okay. Any Anybody else? Any interjections? Um. Agreed. Just something when I was reading it earlier that kind of stood out to me that was kind of refreshing was the, um, I believe it's the second, I know it's the first verse, um, and it just says, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commands in your heart. The second part of that says, keep my commands in your heart. Um, that part was, was sort of a relief to me because it doesn't say, keep, make sure you keep all my commands, mm -hmm. you know, like that's impossible for us to do. Like there's there's no instruction on make sure you keep all the commands in the Bible and don't go astray from those. And and I'll give you prosperity and blessings. Um I thought that was refreshing because I'm like that's a that's a huge task. And I think that most people who um maybe aren't accustomed to going to church or whatever, they kinda they, they feel that overwhelming feeling of if I start going to church or trying to live right now, I gotta keep all these commands and so much to do and it's like an overwhelming feeling, right? Um but so that that first part to me was kind of refreshing because I'm like, good, you know, like I I mean not, not like as, as in a way to try to like do wrong or nothing like that, but I'm just saying like that kind of <laughs> takes yeah. Um, and then also I mean the part about keep, keep them in your heart. Uh, whatever's in your heart, it kind of it shows right every day like. Some of y'all who I'm around all the time, I kind of know the things you're passionate about and things that you you really enjoy doing and all that type of stuff because it's, it's really in your heart. Like that's your passion, that's your desire, whatever. Same thing with this. Keep my commands in your heart. If you keep it close to your heart, it's something that you're going to be passionate about, something you're going to regard in your day-to-day -day life. 
any kind of shows, right? Mm -hmm. So that was just kind of my um, what I got when I read that, those first two verses. No. Work. Yeah. That's what I'm All right. Um. Somebody want to read verse three through ten? Three through ten. I yeah. Do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else want to read though? Because just because you just read. I'll go. Okay. All right. Let love and loyalty always show like a necklace, and write them in your mind. God and people will like you and consider you a success. With all your heart, you must trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Always let Him lead you, and He will clear the road for you to follow. Don't don't ever think that you are wise enough, but respect the Lord and stay away from evil. This will make you healthy and you will feel strong. Honor the Lord by giving him your money and the first part of all of your crops. Then you will have more grain and grapes than you ever need. I have the U version Bible so I can understand it. So no, that was fine. That, that was good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anybody, go ahead. Anybody got something to say about those verses? So basically saying, like, if you're working or you got a job or something, they always pay your tithes to that. At least so what you have. I know it's supposed to be like 10%, but if you don't have that, get what you can. Are y'all y'all familiar with what she's talking about? Most of y'all? Yeah. Anybody have any questions on that part? Positive. Um, I never want to ask that question. Some questions. What's that? Why You're asking me? Yeah. I don't know. Kristen, do you know? <laughs> I mean, outside of that's you know, that's what it says scripturally. I don't know why why the number ten, but in the um old testament that was the number that was the that was the percentage that was given. So I don't know why ten exactly, and I'm not gonna try to come up with no well, 10 is the number of, no, 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 we, <laughs> I'm not going to do that, but biblically, it it's in the scripture. I'll have to find the exact address of it, but um, I don't I don't know the exact address, but in there, it, it specifically says 10%. Okay. Well, Google says... Or it says a 10. <laughs> Google says the number of 10 means completion in the preferred in the perfection of God's divine order. So, it kind of lines up. Good. Google helps, huh? Mm -hmm. um, That's like credible. I mean, it, it's a word. It's a word. Um, like a ministry. It's what numbers mean. Okay. It was a sparkle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I got to slow down. <laughs> that was like, anybody else got anything to say about that? You know, 3 through 10? Five, five and six are my favorite verses. I like those two. Yeah. Which one is it? Um, about the loyalty? About trusting the Lord with all your heart and you not mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. And always submit to him and he will make your past free. Um, and about those verses, when I was reading this again earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to chill. Okay. Um, when I was reading this, um, verse 5, as she just said, it just says, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in verse 6, it says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Um, and then, like, just thinking about that, like, thinking, like, how can I apply this to y'all as college students? Um, just the part, because we're going to be talking about the, the actual chapter in, the, in this book that this goes with. It's about provision. But... That, that end part about it, and he will make your path straight, that just kind of stood out to me because I remember, like, when I was in college and, you know, on the verge of graduating, like, it's kind of stressful because, you know, you're not in school no more. You don't really know what you're going to do with your life. And you got to make all these big decisions, like grown people decisions, you know. And, you know, you're, you want to make the right decisions, and you're like, well, I don't want to do this, and what if that don't work out? And, I mean, even in high school, like, trying to decide where you're going to go to college, if you're going to leave your, your home state, leave your family, your friends, like, where you're going to go, this school, that school. Like, you start having to make, like, all these big decisions, you know, am I going to pursue this career? Like, do I go to this workshop? Like, how do I do this and do that? 
Um, so the part about um, he will make your, your path straight, I just thought like all that can be overwhelming and kind of stressful, right? Um, so that was just kind of like some assurance like, okay, if I do this, then I can, I can be at ease. I can have peace to know that, you know, God is going to direct my paths and, um, and I'll use my wisdom to try to make the best decision. If that makes sense. So yeah. that, that part, um, just kind of stood out to me and, and especially for y'all, some of y'all be graduating soon or whatever, making all these big decisions. But if you, if you keep God first in your life, I just think that he will definitely direct your paths and for you to make the best decisions. Anything? Y'all good? All right. Someone want to read? Uh, where did you stop? Chapter 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Um, someone read verse 11. My child, don't turn away or become bitter when the Lord corrects you. And 12, sorry. The Lord corrects everyone he loves just as parents correct their favorite child. So, the, I just I just wanted to make note. Why do you say favorite child? Parents should have favorite children. I think that's just her version. Um, well, the one he delights in. Mm -hmm. So I think what that really means, like if we if we read that in context, it doesn't mean like your favorite child. It means like those he his children. So like, Kristen, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but um, let's say like there's a realm of we're called children. Like, say we're children of God, right? I know, right? <laughs> um, let's say, can you still hear us? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, like, say, okay. So we're we're under the umbrella of grace, and we're like God's children, right? You say you believe in God and all that. So then, there's other like atheists and people who don't believe in God. So they they wouldn't necessarily be his children. So the one. So my version reads the one his son that he delights in, not necessarily his favorite. Like out of us, have a favorite, but it's, it's just talking about love and within his child. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that there is really any. If, you, I mean, you can even think. Let's think naturally about it. If you have a sibling and you know, like, man, if it's two of y'all and, and one of them, like. Man, my brother is bad. You know, like, <laughs> like you, you keep not doing the right thing, and you try to push the system and all that kind of stuff. I think that um, it makes it easier for a parent to, you know, show their love or show their appreciation for the child who does, you know, who does listen to them and who does uh, try to abide by their rules. But we also see the flip side of that when we see the story of like the prodigal son, somebody who ran off and did their own thing, and uh, when he dis when he came back, the father ran out to him. So I don't think that it's a, I don't think that the purpose of saying, you know, it's the the child who the who the father delights in is to shun any other children as much as it, as much as it is to highlight those who are abiding by his rules or his commands are. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not to it's not to highlight the, the doesn't delight in, but more so just to say, look, if you're if you're delighting yourself in my word and you're uh, upholding the law and you're upholding uh, that which I've set set out for you to do, then I find my delight with you. I, it makes me happy to to be your father. I, I think that's the perspective that we should take from it. Thank you. Anybody else on those? Cause those are one. I think that's one of the scriptures, like in the Bible that you read, and you kind of like what? But it says like, don't despise the Lord's discipline, and and do not resent His rebuke. Meaning that like everything's not gonna be awful. Like there will be some times where you have to be disciplined. This is out of love, you know. And I just think that um, when we get into the the chapter and here's about provision, and I think that if we're thinking naturally about this, like as a, a parent figure, if God's a parent figure to you. There is some, and he's providing this provision, you know, like your parents would if you lived at home. I think there's just some discipline that comes along with that provision. You, um, like, there's rules of the house, 
if you don't live in here, like there's some rooms of the house. If you want me to keep mm-hmm. doing all this stuff for you, there are rooms of the house. And actually it kind of mentions that if you read like down in verse 33 or something like that. But um, that's just kind of something I want y'all to be aware of. Don't feel like, you know, don't get mad. Like, well, this happened to me and then, you know, I can't, like, it's just, it's just some discipline that comes along with that provision that's provided. Yeah. Uh, verse six, when it the, when verse six says, uh, you know, it says, seek his will and all you do and he'll show you which path to take. We have to look at that as a form of provision. You know, you have to stop because initially you hear the word provision and we really kind of start thinking about money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but in in seeking in seeking his will and and understanding his heart and understanding what what God wants from us and him taking out some of the obscurity of what's next and what's to come and all of that. He's saying, if you if you seek my will, I'm going to show you which path to take. I will I will take a clear path and an avenue over, you know, somebody just like, oh, I'm going to give you $3,000 any day. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, now, yes, if you want to give me $3,000, call me and we can set up that PayPal transfer. <laughs> However, <laughs> we have to understand that uh, in life, it, you know, it's like people say it all the time, like the greatest the greatest gifts are the greatest things in world and in, in life can't be purchased. Uh, so understanding God's provision is more so is more than just making sure you have enough money, making sure you have enough food. It, it goes into making sure that you are healthy, making sure that when uh, finals come and I'm all over the place and I'm stressed out, he gives me peace. That is that is. Uh, something that God provides that I will I, nobody could pay me enough money to say no I don't want God's peace it's invaluable so I, I appreciate I appreciate him providing that because uh, have you ever had a time in your life where it's like man all this stuff is going on my parents you know you have somebody so that's probably somebody in school right now went to school and as soon as I got to school I found out my parents they decided they're gonna get a divorce. And the only reason why they were hank the only reason they were trying to stay together was for us to stay together as a family until I moved on, until I went off to college. Um uh, it can be re- it's real easy to get caught up in all of that and not and not finish your work and not, you know, stay focused on on the task that's in front of you. Um, but with God's provision of his peace and the and you delighting yourself in him. And him making your path straight, that that's a that is a level of provision that far exceeds you know any monetary thing. In my humble opinion. Agreed. <coughs> Someone want to read verses thirteen through twenty? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. God blesses everyone who has wisdom and common sense. Wisdom is worth more than silver. It makes you much richer than gold. Wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you want compares with her. In her right hand, in her right hand, wisdom holds a long life, and in her left hand are wisdom. Wisdom makes life pleasant and leads us safely along. Wisdom is a life-giving tree, the source of happiness for all who hold on to her. By this wisdom and knowledge, the Lord created heaven and earth. By this understanding, he let the ocean break loose and the clouds release the rain. Thank you. Comments? Be back. Uh, no. Uh, now uh, um, on the verse that says, uh, verse 14, where she's more popular than <coughs> silver, the song, uh, Kirk Franklin, Silver and Gold. Get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought about that when I heard it. And it's a, uh, um, <laughs> It's a verse. I don't know where it comes from, but it says, "For what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul?" I thought about that when I heard it. Mm-hmm. 
then I thought about uh, today. I'd rather have uh, Jesus than silver and gold. That's the verse. Oh God. Hey. <laughs> That's silver and gold. Um, I have something to say. On <coughs> verse thirteen, it says, "Listen to those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding." And um. On five, it says, "Be not to your own understanding." So, Can you speak up a little bit? Um, on verse five, it says, um, "Trust in the Lord and lean <clears throat> not to your own understanding." Mm -hmm. And then in thirteen, it says, "Blessed are those who find wisdom and gain understanding." So, <clears throat> what I gather from this is that you're gaining understanding, but it's not your own; it's understanding from God. Because you have trusted in him. <coughs> right. Uh that's that's really, really good. That's that's the that's the whole premise. So um anytime you're like reading through Proverbs and I want y'all to like keep that at the forefront of your mind, even as you read through Proverbs and then if you read the book, that's fine too. Um <laughs> but keeping at the forefront of your mind that the whole purpose of Proverbs is a father who sat down and said, I'm going to write something to my son uh, and give him these nuggets and these tools for life. So everything about wisdom is about gaining wisdom and gaining knowledge. And so it's not, you're exactly right, it's not saying go out here and get all this earthly wisdom. And that's why I say it's lean not unto your own understanding. But uh, so, no, some, somebody has a song like, like I made it here, like something about they got here by themselves or something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm. She's talking about Drake. Um, about Drake? You know, you know about Drake? <laughs> what he say? I don't know. I just I heard somebody saying something about it. Anyway, is is it, the song alludes to I like I got here on my own, huh? I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't listen. I don't know. But I'm telling you what, what I heard somebody else say. <laughs> Your camera just went out. Huh? Your camera went out. Oh, no. I'm still here. You your yeah, we can't see you. But, okay, you're back. I'm back. Um, so, uh, anyway, the, whatever the song is, it alludes to um, everything that I have or whatever I did, I got it on my own. And being college students, you have every, you have not every right, but you have the potential or you could, you know, take on that mentality. You come in here, you get your education and you start building whatever empire it is that you're trying to build. So whether you're going into nursing or whether or not you want to be an engineer or you just want to get in business or whatever, you have the ability, you could take on it, like all the information that you have and put your trust in that as opposed to saying, no, even this 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 information that I have, God has given me number one the strength and the will and the ability to be able to gain the knowledge. But He's the one that gives me wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge applied, right? So there are we know plenty of people who have degrees or who have information and they don't do anything with it, and it's just like, well, that's pointless. But it's it takes wisdom, which again that's what Proverbs. Proverbs focuses on is getting wisdom and applying wisdom, not just from what you learn from being involved in, in different, um, maybe different groups or what you learn in your classes, but also what you learn spiritually and what you learn from the Bible and all of that and saying, these are the, these are the things that are helping shape me and shape my thinking so that ultimately the way that I, I talk or the way that I speak is ultimately influenced by God and his word. And that's my foundation. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If not, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a question? Or? No. Oh, okay. So, are y'all good on that? Those those scriptures, that part. Mm -hmm. You want to read the last uh, twenty-one? I think we stopped at twenty, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> twenty-one thirty-five. My son. Preserve sound judgment and discreetment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be, they will be life for you, 
and ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. When it is when it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow, when you now have it with you. Mm, try. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who will trustfully who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done no harm. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteousness. He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. So that's one verse that everybody that live in here with me, um, <laughs> do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully in you. Okay. <laughs> For all y'all that live in here with me, trustfully. I don't do nothing to y'all. You know, I knock before I come in. I don't have to, but I do. You know. <laughs> Don't be plotting no harm. I just want that's the part that stood out to me. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Um, but, I'm for real, that's right. Y'all better not, cause I still come down there, cause that's my friend. So. Right. And I so forgot to introduce her, but most of y'all know who she is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't. You know? There's gonna be one. You don't know me. Hey. hey. So, you don't know me. <laughs> that know is um. Hey. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is my friend, y'all. She wrote this this book. Um, she's my best friend. She's my bestie. Um, she lives in Dallas. Uh, <laughs> um, and so, she, you know, she was working on this book for a long time. And, you know, God finally blessed her to get it out. And she was here earlier in the year. And she spoke to some of y'all. And da, da. So since we're going through her book, which we're going to try to do, you know, Every week, I ain't gonna be here. Somebody else gonna lead it. Uh, uh. Um. So, but we're gonna we're gonna really try to do that. I know we said we we're gonna do that last semester. And I was busy. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, we was all busy. So, yeah. but we're gonna really try to get through this because this is really good. Um. And so this is Kristen. She's. We're gonna. Anybody have anything to comment on those last few verses? Now we're gonna go into. Where's um? Yeah. Um. Where's the Hey Ricky, hey Ricky, where's Shy? Shy speaks. I don't know, where's Shy? I'm gonna I'm give y'all some exclusive information right now. Shy speaks is in the studio right now. <laughs> she is in the studio right now as we speak, finishing uh, her e her new EP that will come out um probably to it. March, April time frame. So she's finishing up, she's like getting it mixed and mastered and all that kind of stuff. Like she's finishing like all of that layout, like voiceovers and all that kind of stuff. So that's exclusive. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell her I told you because I'll get in trouble. Wait, I'm going to get Ricky part two. Oh no, we need a part two. Hey, hey Ricky part two. Yeah, we yeah. Hey Ricky part two. I'm going I'm to I'm gonna tell her she needs to write a Hey Ricky part two. All right. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, so go ahead, Kristen. We're going to follow you. Oh. Um, you going to follow me. Chapter. Follow me as I follow Christ. <laughs> uh, We're hanging up. Right. <laughs> so everybody had a book. Get your book. <laughs> Ew, stop being ratchet. You can't be ratchet on here. We got it. <laughs> Y'all do y'all do know I'm recording this, right? Oh my really? goodness. Baby, get that camera. <laughs> <laughs> yep, white. Back there being back there being ratchet. <laughs> but did you get keep patting her hair though? You saw keep at the weed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'ma crop that part out. I'ma crop that part out. <laughs> Okay, uh, chapter three, provision. Um, Tiffany, can you read those two definitions? Thanks. 
Tiffany. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me. <laughs> Do what? Chapter 3 from Vision, number 1. Something provided a measure or other means for meeting a need. Number 2. To make arrangements for supplying the means of support, money, etc. That's right. Um, I'm just going to read the first paragraph and then we can, like, you know, discuss. But um, I said, as women, um, one trait or characteristic that helps us feel secure in provision. Uh, it is provision, I'm sorry, from fathers to husbands to receive sufficient provision lets us know others see a need that we have and are willing to do what's necessary to provide the things that allow us to feel that security. To have a warm place to live, gas in the car, food on the table, basic needs that all human beings possess. The unique thing about the heart of a woman is that it is wired to respond to this provision. We get all ooey and gooey inside just knowing someone cares about our overall well-being. And it's no different with God. So if we think like naturally, um, so whether whether it's like your dad or some boo thing, like, <laughs> Tim, you know what I'm talking about, that boo thing, because <laughs> you start nodding your head. only reason why I did that is because you start nodding your head. Like when I said boo thing, you was like, yo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but um to know like like I I remember I would go home. My daddy don't do it as much now and I'm gonna have to have a conversation with him about that. But I would go home and visit my parents while I was in college and I would pull up in the driveway, let's say my daddy needed to leave, so he would like get in my car to move my car. And when I got back, whenever he got back from doing whatever he was doing and I got ready to leave he he had filled my gas tank up. And it's, you know, the little things like that, it, in those moments, I knew my daddy really loved me because, <laughs> listen, he like, I don't want you out here in these streets. You leaving somewhere at 10 o'clock at night and you don't have no gas, you're going to be trying to stop and get, like, no, I, I got it. I'm going to take care of it for you. Um, those little things, like, it means the absolute world to you. Um, I, another example, I'm extremely, like, cold nature. So I always am like, I need some socks and footies. Like, um, let's see, today, today's footie of choice is my Dallas Mavericks footies. Woo! Yep. Yep. Team Mavs, you know. All right, we, you got one fan. He's coming up, you know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's our, hey, who is that, Sadie? Yep. <laughs> that's right. Mav, D-Town, baby. All right, move, we're moving on. Okay. Anyway, okay, 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 okay. But so, um, one of my one of my friends, they know, like, I'm like, if you go somewhere, just bring me some socks back. Like, if one of y'all like travel and y'all go to like some foreign country, I'm like, just bring me some socks back. They be like socks, and it means the world to me if you actually do it, cause I actually like I love socks because they're fun, but at the same time, I'm cold natured. So for somebody to do that for me. It's this, it's this, it could be the most simple thing, but it's when somebody sees something in your life, whether it's a need or just a preference or whatever, and they go out their way. They might not be going out of their way, but they make sure that they do that for you. Um, it makes you feel whatever kind of way. You're like, oh, that was so sweet. Oh, my God. He brought me Twinkies because he know I don't like flowers, you know. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Love and Basketball for that one. Um, <laughs> But it's, a, it's, it's little things like that that are examples of provision that can extend beyond just, oh, you needed, you know, 20, you know, you need $2,000 to get through college for this semester or something like that. Um, it, is, it definitely can extend beyond finances. So, um, the the script the verse that I have in the book, um, my hey. son or my daughter, hey. do not forget my teaching. Hey, 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 Oh, I'm sorry. You have to yell at me. I can't. You gotta yell. You were all. I mean, I'm. Go ahead. You good? Go ahead. She said like her dad take her, maybe take her car, get something, but put gas in it. 
I always get like a good morning text and a good night text from my dad. Like I know I'm always gonna be able to expect that regardless if I'm asleep or Aww. when I wake up. Like I'm always. <laughs> See, I like little stuff like oh, that. How food that? He don't be texting. <laughs> <laughs> That is that's, that is so precious. Oh, that's precious. I'm gonna have to tell my I'm gonna have to tell my daddy. Daddy, you slipping? You slipping, daddy? Okay. Anybody else before I, I go on? Cause for y'all accuse me of not listening. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, I said, uh, My son or my daughter, do not forget my teaching, uh, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. And I think one of y'all brought up that uh, that part of the, the verse uh, when we read it earlier, that, you know, it is, uh, a, a great part of God's provision is his, is him giving you peace. And we touched on it earlier, but it's, it was a, it was kind of a B clause, right? So the first part talked about you, our responsibility uh, for keeping his commandments and understanding that in keeping his, when I, when I do part A, which is verse one, then I get part B, which is verse two. So as long as I'm uh, keeping my mind on the, uh, it says, don't forget my teachings, but keep the commands in your heart. Um, then for for they will prolong your life many years. So I can't I can't expect my life to be prolonged many years if I'm not keeping the commands in my heart. And uh, you know what I mean? Like it's a it was a it's a it's kind of like an if then statement, right? Uh, so one thing that um, Coach Scott said, <laughs> Coach Scott, yeah, <laughs> um, she said about keep good job about keeping it in your heart, huh? Good job. Oh, I'm I'm learning. One thing uh, that that she said earlier about keeping it in your heart to kind of remove that, like, man, I'll never ever ever be able to uphold every law that's in the Bible. Like that's a, like it's crazy. It's like a thousand commandments in the Bible. Like I'm probably gonna forget half of them off the cuff. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Just, I mean, you know, you go through. If you go through the book of Leviticus, and it's like, listen, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Listen, stop wearing your hair curly on the left side. Only wear it curly on the right. It's like, it's it's so specific. And it, I mean, you can if number one, if you're not keeping yourself in the word, no, you won't remember those commandments to keep them in your heart, right? But it's saying keep them in your heart because, um, you know, the scripture says, uh, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So your heart at, or um, out of the heart flows the wellspring of life. Those are those are all scriptures that, that talk about what happens in what happens in your heart ultimately shapes or directs everything else in your life. So if I keep the commandments in my heart, that means that that's something that's at the forefront of my mind. And I want to make sure that I'm always checking in with what's in my heart. So if I don't feel something in my heart, according to what, according to the commandments that I'm keeping in my heart, then I'm not able to carry out whatever other action might be asked of me. So, um, the, okay, so an easy one to go to is um, don't fornicate. That's just an easy one to, to, to go to. If that's a commandment that's in my heart, when I when an uh, an obstacle or an opportunity presents itself for me to act out in that way, if I'm going back and I'm remembering the commandments that are stored in my heart, that's what helps dictate my actions when I when I focus in on the commandments that are stored in my heart. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Somebody got something to say? Mm -hmm. Oh, Scott, what you think about that? I think that's good. Um, as you were talking, you were saying something about um, if you don't feel it in your heart, then your uh, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> if you don't feel it in your heart, then your actions won't. 
what, yeah. right your 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 actions your actions are gonna follow what's in your heart. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Are out of the wellsprings of the heart. Right. So life flow. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I was I was kind of thinking about that as you you went on talking. Um, and that's true for for us. I mean, for everybody really. Um, I have an example. I'll use. I mean. If you're if you're dating somebody and you know y'all to get like y'all been in relationships with people right and y'all can kind of tell like hey I can kind of like mm, like yeah kind of funny like what's wrong with you like you all right today like well I mean even, <laughs> I mean like I mean like but really like have you ever been with somebody and this I'm talking about like from day one like they just never you never really got that. That same, like you feel like maybe you like them more than they like you. Yeah. Like you never really got that that feel, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Now everybody here. Uh, 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 we're not doing that. I ain't doing that. They always like you back. They like me more, and I be scared. Yeah, me too. Whoa. Right. <laughs> That's my problem. Well, for for some of us, you know. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> That? I'm I'm sorry I I can't yeah. share on that yeah. I don't know that I don't know that part Coach Scott. You what? I don't know that life. They usually like me more than I like them. Hey, I'm with you, girl. Look. Anyways, um, <laughs> happened to me, but let me clear that up. Yeah, you want to clear that up? I'm just saying. Right? I mean, this didn't happen to me, but I can just imagine <laughs> if you were like really killing somebody, you know. Well, you know, they were still they were in feeling you, but not as much as you. Was you was like, but you could tell, right? Yeah. You know, like you don't get no good morning text. You know, you always want to wish you. Get <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank and you're like, I'm going to see, you know, how long it's going to take before you hit me up today. And then it's like 5 o'clock and they hit you up. And you're like, you know, like, well, I mean, dang. But I guess that's what. Just one, just one. <laughs> but no, but don't, don't up my numbers. I know you too. <laughs> yes, you do. Who <laughs> 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 that was? <laughs> what? I missed it. What was said? Raven said we need to move on. I agree. But we do. <laughs> but no, on the only thing I what I was trying to say out of that is. When something's not in somebody's heart, if they you don't really have that whatever attachment, like you can be like physically attracted to somebody on that side, but it's not really you ain't really feeling it, you know. It's it'll show, you'll know, you know. So that was just my example that I <laughs> that I thought about. Um, but go go on. No, coach. Oh. You have something to say after that, but that part led into a big conversation that you didn't really wrap it up. Who was that talking? Huh? Like, what I can't the, see you what, talking. What was the point of no, saying I was, you can tell when somebody doesn't like you? Oh, because if she was saying if it's I'll, out of your heart, then you can't. You, the action's, the action's not going to come up. That was okay. Lisa. Uh, quite sure. Uh, see, I just needed a wrap-up. Yeah, yeah. I, that's all I was trying to do real quick. Yeah. <laughs> no. But that was just kind of, that's what I, I was like, trying to, like, life examples, you know. So that's can, can somebody can somebody over there read that next paragraph? Over where? Over here on this couch? On that row right there. Because I ain't seen them. Hey, y'all. <laughs> 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 
y'all, y'all just y'all not gonna just not gonna respond like I ain't just say hey. You see? <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> okay, who gonna read? He. Hey, you know you skipped the paragraph. No, I didn't. Oh. I, I talked about that part. Oh, my oh. I'm just playing. Huh? Okay, I'm going to read it. Our Father in heaven cares so much Oh, wait, whoa. This is going to read. Okay, my bad. I can't hear. Go ahead. Okay. Our Father in heaven cares so much for us that he has made preparations. Uh, 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 you on the wrong paragraph. He has That's what she was just about to No, she can read it. Go ahead. Read it. Read. Go about it. Yeah. Read them. <laughs> Our Father in heaven cares so much for us that he has made preparation for the provision of our lives. To prepare something means to think ahead and plot a course to get a certain place or thing. Reading through the chapter, we see the simplicity of God's provision when we follow his word. His love for us is so apparent. Keep going. He. Yeah, keep going. He. He has given us the key to long life, peace, and prosperity. He has prepared a path for us to attain our desired security if we would just remember his teachings and keep his commandments. Throughout the book of Proverbs, we see the command to listen or to hear what is being spoken. There is a difference in hearing and listening. When he says, hear my son or daughter, he is asking that you would lend me your ear or consider this. However, when he writes, listen, he is saying, I want you to hear me with the intent to act on what you heard. Oh, God. That, that's it right there. Y'all not even listening to her talking about listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I I mean, I, I don't know. I kind of, I wanted to highlight that part in the book because I, I realized going through how many times it's like, here, my son, listen, consider this. Hey, here, listen. And I'm like, I'm listening already. But whenever, whenever he says it, it's like, okay, now I really, really don't want you to miss this. You know, <laughs> if somebody, you can be in a full out conversation and somebody be like, say, listen. We already talking. I'm listening, but I, I'm like, no. I want you to really pay attention to this part that I'm about to say, um, so that you can again be moved into action. Or I want you to, I want you to know that this is something that I really care about. Because even if it's not something that I want you to move into action on, I want you to listen and hear me out because it's something that's of importance to me. What's going on out there? Uh, we're listening. Somebody just rung the doorbell. Oh, okay. They come. They can come in. They coming in the Bible study? No. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> oh. Okay. Cause they late. You can find them if they late, T. Uh, but yeah. So um, listening, 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 hearing, not just hearing. Hearing is is a more repetitive thing, right? So um. Here, like, um, if you li if you're like listening to the radio and you hear a bunch of music, you hear the music, but you know, like, you keep hearing a song over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and then one time you actually like listen to the words, and you you heard that you could have heard that song a hundred times before you actually like listen to the words, and then you're like, man, like that that then it became your song because it was like, oh, you know, like. Whatever, whatever they were talking about, it spoke to you at that moment. It's a difference in, in hearing and listening. And so uh, with anything in the scripture, I think we ought to have a listening perspective. Uh, we, need, we need to hear and listen with the intent to act on what we heard. So uh, if he's like, you know, Listen, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. That's a listen moment, you know. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. If you if you were wise, like if it goes into like 
<laughs> don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun and shun evil. It's really, I love the fact that it's highlighting our responsibility for really what we experience, right? So it's saying if if I'm wise in my own eyes, there's there's the ability or there's a possibility for evil to come up because I'm not fear. It. The moment I take my eyes and I'm only focusing on or I'm being wise in my own eyes, then at some point I'm not fearing the Lord, you know, or if I'm not trusting in the Lord and I'm leaning into my own understanding, my past won't be straight. Y'all, y'all, y'all feel me? Y'all, y'all feel where I'm going with that? Yeah. Like I have to understand that God gave me His Word as a as a form of provision, so that He He's already made arrangements for my life, and He's like, seek me, and whether that's in prayer or in reading the Word, so that you will understand the path that I have already made provision for you to have, the path to prosperity and peace. Or it, it could be specific. It could be a specific uh, direction to your life. I never once did I did did I you know see God in prayer or read my word, and I felt enlightened to be able to uh, to sing. That's just not as much as I I like to sing. I can't sing though. So if I'm if I start leaning in my, onto my own understanding, and I'm like, well, I can kind of carry a tune. <laughs> <laughs> I can kind of carry that note right there, and, and but I I miss God, and so I you start getting on this uh this distracted path or this path that's not straight or crooked because you're trying to go on on what you want to do and not acknowledging Him or not seeking Him uh for for His path or His uh provision for your life. We good? Yeah. <laughs> Questions. Comments, concerns. A question. No, I don't. I don't have no good. Have y'all ever wanted to do something that you really wasn't good at? Like you really I can't see like nobody. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, I have. I was I can see. Like, I like it's something know. like y'all really liked or you know wanted to really do, but then you just realized you didn't have the talent for it. Draw. I think it's really oh, yeah. Oh, I can Because I don't hear I, mean, I always want to be a rapper. A rapper? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's right. You realize. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't sing, though. So then you realize it, you know. <laughs> it didn't <laughs> but I think that's kind of what Kristen was saying in, in to, you know, some of that paragraph is, you know, you got to really listen and hear and, and try to be uh, all in sync with, with God and his word and what he's speaking to you and what he's gifted you to do, not just, you know, kind of what you want to do, because you may not be gifted to do that. Right. So <laughs> that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. I'm like, I cannot say. And I think I can. My parents always tell me. But I think I can sing. And that's why I always be playing music in my room. You have to text me because I'll be up to having a mini concert. It's all right. Do it in your room, though. Sing it in my room. Right. But you also know your limits. Like, you're not trying to be in the studio using up. See, let me. Okay. This is what happens. It's something that you feel like this is this is just something that I want, despite you know, despite despite whether or not somebody anybody else is encouraging you in that. But you're like, man, they just ain't feeling me. So I'm gonna go to the studio and spend valuable time and money trying to get in here and record something. And, and you're wasting time. It's a rabbit trail, right? You like when God is like, Well, if you would listen to me over here, I said if you would do this, if you would go to school and com and complete your engineering degree. I'm a you. I, here's your path that I'm a, I'm gonna openly provide for you. But when you go this way, the path is is not straight, which means that it, it has all types of distractions. You gotta go through all this extra stuff. And not to say that you don't go through things in life, you know, while you're fo following after him to in attempts to be on the straight path. But 
it it just makes life a whole lot difficult. And then you got to come back to this point like, oh, wait, this is probably not what I'm supposed to be doing. Now you got to go start all the way over. Or, you know, you are you just, or even if you don't have to start all the way over, you've wasted time. You know, and now we got to rely on God to, you know, God, if you could just, you know, <laughs> bring back, you know, uh, bring back the time that I lost and all of that. Like, no, you should have been listening. Listen. Mm -hmm. And now's the perfect opportunity to listen. You ain't got to wait until you 40. Just listen now. So, y'all, we're going to wrap this up in like 10 minutes. But I do, real quick, and I don't want us to get off of That just made me think of something. And for some reason, my mind is so relationship right now. But when she was just talking about, <laughs> no, she was about yeah, about wasting time, and I'm like, this is why I'm, I'm kind of age now. I know y'all still kind of dating around and messing and whatever. But y'all kind of still not having fun dating whoever, dating whatever. But I'm just like, I'm kind of at the point where, kind of like what she said, I ain't trying to date you for no six, seven months just to realize like we ain't supposed to be together. Like I don't have time. I ain't trying to waste them that type of time no more. So, I ain't got it. So I'm, I'm short on time, but I'm but my time right now. So, <laughs> but T, but Coach Scott, what happens is, what happens is because it's something that we're passionate about. It's something that we want. We don't go to God. We don't seek Him. That's to true. see if this is the straight path. That's true. Until until so I'm, I want to. I want to. I'm gonna see. Okay, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been dating this guy for six months, and I just realized. Yeah, I'm gonna pray about it. Cause something I don't really think is probably gonna work. But I'm gonna pray now. When I could have prayed at the beginning, and then I ain't have to waste that six months. But I didn't want to be real fine, y'all. Like he was real fine. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I can't. All right, go ahead. You know, you know, when he's supposed to be married for 10 years, me like, he went for me. True. <laughs> <laughs> That's Not true. negative. That's true. Negative. So you didn't realize that until the 10th year? Right. <laughs> Not this one. Some people try to Not live this one. Because they want to live. Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. So I'm a, I'm gonna hit this one real quick and uh, this last paragraph and really um, the the tone behind this is really a lot of the scripture is talking about you know or it says keep my commandments in your heart or bind them around your finger or bind them around your neck like a necklace and and so that's kind of where this next uh, this next paragraph kind of speaks from uh, it says the goal in this race of being free in Christ is not I repeat, is not to see how many scriptures you can quote. God wants to know what you did with the word that he left you on earth. When he says, don't forget, don't forget them, it's not about a memory test. He wants to see the application of his words. Why would you work every day to put all your money in a bank account but never pay towards any bills? What good would it do for you to have everything you need for life stockpiled somewhere and not apply to the appropriate accounts of life to prevent you from going into debt. God desires to make provision for us, but it is up to us to take what he has provided and keep our lives from going in the red or in the negative. Um, that was like, for me, at the time that I wrote this, um, I'm pretty sure that was... Like was well, chapter three, so it was of course early on in the writing. But at that time, I was like trying to figure out what was gonna happen to me next with my job, and um, I, I mean, I wanted to work, you know, I want to work, but at the same time, I feel like there's so much contention, or I feel like I don't know what y'all y'all talking about something random, you know, it things just weren't they weren't like real clear um, in that particular environment, and so. Um, I had to like really say, okay, God, if I say that I trust you and I trust that you're going to make provision for me, I have to trust that everything else in life is going to uh, align itself as long as I'm applying the wisdom that you've given me. So if I, if so, uh, about, so I started writing the book in January for my job in July. 
Uh, but before I did that, I made provision for what's going to happen for the next three to six months of not working. And all of that stuff, it, it was all just kind of like weaving in and out on how, how God is going to provide. And so in that time, I did see where uh, as my, my faithfulness to him and reading his word and my diligence in that, I saw God bless me in ways like y'all wouldn't be sitting here reading this book right now if if I hadn't committed myself to not trying to learn scripture so that I can say, oh, I, I remember all these, these scriptures, but so that I can pl apply them to my life because they bring strength and they bring they bring peace. So when I'm concerned about how is this going to happen and how is this going to work out, but I go back and say, God, you said that wisdom brings about this and wisdom brings about peace and wisdom is more is worth more than gold and silver and rubies, then I have to trust that in my attempt to gain more wisdom and knowledge from you, that you're gonna you're gonna make provision for me. You're gonna set my path straight. And that, that's our focal point. Our focal point is to trust in God's ability to provide according to our needs as we find ourselves in Him. As we find ourselves looking into our hearts in the, the commandments that we store there and living our lives according to uh, the, the, our acting upon the, the words that we, that we store up or the, the scripture that we learn and all of that stuff. That's me. That's, that's all I got. Y'all got questions or I know T, I know you're trying to wrap it up. Y'all got questions? Um, the, I don't think she might, but as, as she was talking, I just kind of want to say this last part. Um, and she was talking about her whole job situation and she really had to try to like apply. You don't mind me talking about you right now? I can say it. <laughs> no, at least, at least you're not talking behind my back. So go ahead. Um, <laughs> but you know, like saying that she, you know, she lost her job and then she had to like really like apply these, these words. It wasn't no more like fantasy, like. Well, that all sounds good. Like I'm gonna trust God, but yeah, you say you're gonna trust God, but you you got this nice job and you you still you know you good. Um, one thing I admire her for for is when she was writing this book, and like she said, she did lose her job, and I don't even know how she continued to even like go like write like you know things. She had to really apply this word, like um, not to try to like. Kristen has her master's degree, so she got student loans. She has. Huh. She w, she got a, a nice car payment, she's buying a house, she got a mortgage, like she had all these bills and she lost her job. Like I mean I didn't lose my job, I left my job. She left her job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um but she was how long were you out of work for? Uh, I left in July and I didn't start working again until uh late November, early December. So five months. So, <laughs> five to you know the paycheck. <laughs> um, but so you know, I I admire her for that because I watched her like go through this point of like because there were times where I know she was just like, man, I can't be trying to write no book. I got to you know, you trying to find a job, got all these bills, they all these bills keep coming, and like you really have to apply the stuff that you're that you're writing right now. Like it's easy to sit down and write this book or, or read the Bible and be like, yeah, that all sounds good. I'm gonna write this stuff and that's gonna motivate somebody. But for her to sit down and write this and be motivating herself at the same time, because you really gotta believe the stuff you write. <laughs> like, I just thought that was. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> that and, was. And I, honestly, I use that. That honestly, that's a that's a part of my testimony as it relates to this as it relates to this process is. And I and I encourage you um, in that is that as you are growing and learning in Christ, as you're reading the scripture and you're really trying to apply it to your life, understand that um, the process it is not totally about me. So yes, I have to get it, but I, there was no way that I can share it in a way for you to get it and it, and and it really stick without me having gone through some of it. Now again, I don't I don't subscribe to well, everybody go got to go through something. Some things you can learn from watching somebody else's experiences and saying I don't want to go through that. But there are some life lessons that you learn along the way that help you effectively um, build and package your testimony so that you can help somebody else out later on in life. So um, 
it was definitely a process. It was definitely, you know, a trust, <clears throat> excuse me, a trusting process that I'm grateful for uh, because I can speak passionately to you about trusting him. When it's not clear, I have to understand that, okay, at the end of the day, this is what I have to do. I have to make sure that I'm delighting myself in him so that he can make my path straight. I have to make sure. That's awkward, T. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but no, that's good. You pay in the room as I close, you know. <laughs> no, but um, just making sure that, you know, I, I believe wholeheartedly that God is going to provide for me as I delight myself in him. I believe wholeheartedly that he is going to ensure that my path is made straight because I'm saying, God, I'm putting you at this place in my heart. I'm putting your word in my heart and I don't want to depart from that. And so anytime I feel something or anytime I, I'm about to move into any type of action, let me check first with the words that's stored in my heart so that I can live my life according to that. Boom. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Bars. Bars. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> um, so we're gonna set up an ending prayer. So that was good. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> you wanna pray? <laughs> <laughs> Christy, Christy, you gonna close this out? You gonna pray? I will. All right. I will. Oh, this is so nice. Let's pray. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day and this time of fellowship. God, I thank you for each and every individual that's here and that is here to hear your word, God, and not just hear it, Father, but listen and apply it, God. I thank you for the gift of friendship and fellowship that you have given us uh, each other to hold each other accountable, that you've given us this group to be able to bounce ideas and bounce thoughts about how to apply your word to our lives so that we can receive your peace, so that we can receive your prosperity, so that we can receive your provision. Father, I pray that you would uh, open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand your scriptures. Every time we dig into it, Father, let us pull something else out of it that we can apply it uh, so that we can see our lives be enriched and not just our lives, but those that are around us, Father. So we thank you for this time. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your strength. I cover each and every one of them as this semester starts back, Father, that you would uh, enlighten their minds, Father, that as they, uh, as those that are about to uh, embark upon graduation, God, that that senioritis will not come upon them, that you would help them to finish strong, that they will uh, complete the race that you have given them, and that they would seek you wholeheartedly for the path, the straight path that you have made for them. We thank you, God, and we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Right. Thank y'all for coming. You ain't going to be thank y'all. Thank you. Hey. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you, how you how you at Talladega with your UTD shirt on? It's cool though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boosh, baby. All right. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. That was absolutely amazing. My first like real Google Hangout Bible study. All of that. Um, thank you so much, Coach Scott, for having me and for opening up your Bible study for me to do this Google Hangout and just enjoy and uh, just fellowship with you guys in this Bible study. I truly hope that you guys were blessed by it. Continue the study. Continue reading the, the Word, not just Proverbs, but that's a great start, starting ground or a great foundation to build your lives, uh, especially as, as college students. So thank you guys again so much for the opportunity. And anytime you want me back, just call me. All right. Love y'all so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Kristen F. O'Neill. Please say the F, C-F-O, whatever. Love y'all so much. Thank you so much for your support. Peace.